Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is my second attempt at the Cali Pro preview. We just finished up the Fan Friday video. Thank you all of you who watched that one and thank you all of you who watch my content. Uh, I genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate it. But let's go ahead and dig into the Cali Pro Men's Open Bodybuilding Division. Like I said in the last video, I think it's the only pro division. And then they're going to have plenty of NPC divisions after that. Uh, my margarita's down. Hopefully you guys enjoyed your margarita. Fridays are always for margaritas and Saturdays. Unless you're in prep. If you're in prep, don't do it. But uh, let's go ahead and start off with the first competitor on the lineup. Our boy, Tony O'Burton. One of the first people to ever be on the channel for an interview. Uh, he was a 212 guy. He competed at the last... Let me pull up my notes so I'm not uh, blowing smoke. He competed at the Olympia last year, placing 10th in the 212. But before that, or actually immediately after that, I can't remember how that timeline works out. I think right after the Olympia, he hopped in. Yeah, right after the Olympia, he hopped into the Legion Sport Festival, men's open bodybuilding, placed fourth after winning the Indy Pro in the 212. Uh, and now he's going to be competing at the Cali Pro, or the California State Championships, whatever you want to call it, men's open, my prediction, top four. I wanted to place him higher. I know Ian Valier on the new um, Real Bodybuilding Podcast Bro Chat, he said uh, he's going to win it. Ian, kudos, praise to you, brother. Uh, thank you so much for putting uh, our boy Tonio that high on the pedestal. I think he could win. Uh, I'm going to safely put him in fourth. But gosh darn it, Tonio, if you do not make me wrong and place second or third or win it, I'm coming for you, man. I really think you can win the show. Uh, I think you have the structure, you have the conditioning, you have the mass, you have the tiny midsection. Like everything's in your favor. You just need to bring that conditioning that you are known for. So, with that, that's the first competitor. Douglas Fruche, another good friend of ours. He's been on the channel for an interview. He's coming on after the Cali Pro. We were just talking in the comments on Instagram. So I look forward to him. He, uh, unfortunately, his placings haven't been great this year. Uh, I thought he looked pretty sharp at the New York Pro. He, you know, he could come in sharper. He, uh, his lower back could come in a little sharper. Uh, he placed ninth at the New York Pro and the Indy Pro. Uh, like I said, I thought his package was really good. Um, conditioning was spot on he's known for having those like clam tight glutes just super shredded all the way down the posing trunks um i'm just wondering like what he needs to uh crack into that top six i'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment sections below um, i feel like he has the muscle like i don't know if if he needs to just build the lats bigger to make the midsection look smaller uh, but the legs are there and everything else looks pretty, pretty complete. Uh, if anything, he could use a little bit more structure, more uh, thickness in the back. But I mean, he's a really complete bodybuilder. Uh, I feel like him and Dorian Haywood get uh, get a bad look. So uh, best of luck, Douglas Fruche, um, first attachment nutri nutrition athlete and a good friend of the channel. Best of luck, Douglas Fruche. Charles Griffin is next. Now, Charles... He was not happy with his placings at the Indie Pro. Um, if you watched my coverage, pause the video, watch my Indie Pro finals uh, coverage, you'll see that uh, he was really shocked he didn't win the show. Now, um, I think I've said enough about blessings, so I don't want to just sound like I'm always just like harping on the guy, but you know, I had Charles winning the show. So, you know, take that as you may. Uh, I'm a guy who makes videos in his underwear, so, you know, weigh that as much as you may uh but i really like charles griffin really solid physique i mean he's he's been competing for almost a decade uh at least in the pros you know he turned pro in uh like 2015 2016 so i mean he's been really killing it lately um placed second at the indie pro took the new york pro off and then now he's coming into the cali pro man all those p's in a row that's that's rough uh great structure great physique very wide, the conditioning spot on. Um, I'm wondering where he's going to place in this. I think he's going to place second, and uh, I'll let you know who I think is going to win the video very soon. But uh, if Charles won the show, no complaints from me. As long as he's uh, just as sharp as he was at the Indy Pro, I think would be a great placing, a great package for the Cali Pro. 
and best of luck to Charles Griffin at the uh, upcoming show. Now, next up, this one's a tricky one. So, uh, Pitar Clancier, uh, he's been announcing he's been gonna, he's going to compete at the Indy Pro. He couldn't because of Visa. He's going to do the New York Pro. Couldn't because of a visa. But uh, he just recently posted on his Instagram saying that his visa was approved. So you you've heard it here officially. Pitar Clarence, uh, apologies, uh, Clancier will be competing at the Cali Pro Men's Open Bodybuilding. I have him in third. I think he's going to land in third place. Uh, we haven't seen him from uh, 2017. We haven't seen him since then. Uh, and he placed outside the top 10. Now, it wasn't his best package. He wasn't as sharp as his Instagram is kind of leading us to think he's going to be for the Cali Pro. Um, with these Instagram photos I'll throw up for you, he looks sharp. He looks ready to really compete. And, uh, you know, based off of what I've seen, his structure, and then the competition, I think he's going to land in third. But, uh, of course, let me know your thoughts in the comment sections below. Am I way on? Am I way off? Let me know down below. I'd love to hear the um, thoughts, critiques, and concerns down below. Theo Laguerrier. I still don't know how to say his name, so let me know down below, guys. Um, I think he's going to land outside the top six. Um, I think he has the structure, he has the conditioning, but we have some massive names in this lineup, uh, and I think it's going to knock him just outside the top six. Now, he could creep up and take that sixth place spot. It's definitely possible, but based off my predictions, I have him in seventh. Obviously, no disrespect, he placed uh, fourth, fourth at the New York Pro Men's Open. Uh, solid physique last year. He did so well. He did the um, the Yamamoto Pro Cup. He did uh, so many shows. Yamamoto Pro Cup placed fifth. The Arnold Classic UK placed third. And then uh, a plethora of fifth and sixth at the other Spain and Portugal and um, Puerto Rico Pro Show. So best of luck to him. I'd like to see him a little bit sharper than he was in New York. If he brings even more conditioning, he could probably place all the way as top as fourth. Uh, again, so uh, I think you can make some improvements and um, retain that fourth place spot and keep that momentum going. Uh, but best of luck, Theo. My dark horse pick for anywhere from third to sixth is going to be Andrea Muzi. Now, uh, he has the structure. He has ooh, apologies. I punched the mic. He has the structure. He has the muscle. The, the, the issue with him is the conditioning. Uh, and it's really hurt his placings. Last year, he placed at his last show at the Europa Pro Championships. He placed 11th men's open. And then before that, 7th at the Spain show or Portugal Pro. And uh, at the uh, Puerto Rico Pro, he placed 5th. So uh, the big thing for him is conditioning. If he comes in sharp, if he comes in hard, uh, he's going to do well. Based off of some pictures we saw, I think it was two days, one day ago. Two days before the show, he posted a really nice front double. He looks sharp, um, but he looked sharp before. So it's really going to depend on how sharp he looks from the back. You know, how hard those glute lines, how dug in are or dug out, dug in, dug out are the hamstrings anyways. Words are hard, guys. Uh, the best of luck, um, Andre Muzi. I think he's going to be the dark horse top six. Now, who I think is going to win the show. I think it's controversial, but I think it's a fairly safe prediction is going to be Andre Presti. Let me move my notes over here. So it's a little bit closer to you guys. Uh, love his physique, love his structure placed second at the New York pro, which I thought was phenomenal for him. Uh, people forget that he's an Olympian. He won a pro show uh, last year in the European grand prix tour. One of those shows, I think it was the Portugal pro. Uh, he won that show, came into the Olympia, didn't place that well. Uh, and, and it's because of the conditioning. He wasn't as sharp. He wasn't as hard as he needed to be to compete with literally the best of the best in the world. That's what the Olympia is all about. Uh, he came into the New York Pro. I think he made corrections. He could have been harder. Um, and especially from the back, I think he still needs to put on some more muscle. Uh, you know, via the photos, you can see the comparison yourself. But I love the guy's structure. Great, great shape. Uh, very, very wide. Something that uh, I've heard from several different people, different pros and fans, is that he is so wide in person. So uh, hopefully we get to meet him in the near future. 
but Andrea Presti, I have him winning the Cali Pro. Let me know your thoughts down below, of course. Christopher Robinson uh, making his pro debut, a.k.a. Chris Tuswell on Instagram. Crazy bubbly physique, good conditioning. Uh, I think he's going to get lost in the lineup a little bit. Uh, he's a little undersized, but he has so much muscle. The structure is phenomenal, and the bubbliness is very Phil Heath-esque. So uh, expect him in the top 10. Obviously, if there's only 10 competitors, um, I don't know where he's going to land, but I think if he cracked in the top six, um, I will have to eat something not so tasty because uh, I was way off. So let me know, guys, and keep me accountable if he does place in the top six. Um, Mohamed Shaban, or Mo Shaban, as he goes on Instagram, I'm thinking fifth place. Now, the, the critique I had for him last year was he put on so much muscle. He put on so much muscle in 2020 and 2021. The issue is, for some reason, he doesn't have that separation that some of these other guys do. Like, you look at... You know, I, I, I critique Hunter Labrada a lot, but for how young he is, he his separation and his conditioning is really good. Um, I wish that for Mohamed Shaban. If he could get the separation in the legs to look something like a, like a Phil Klahar, you know, Phil Klahar is an older guy placing uh, top two, top three in a couple shows last year. If he could bring that level of conditioning and separation, striations in the quads and hamstrings, if he brought that to his legs, I think Mohamed Shaban is going to be winning a lot of shows. Um, the issue is that uh, by the time he really started to see some conditioning, he was starting to he was starting to fade in other areas. Uh, the midsection was starting to extend or distend, uh, and he wasn't looking as sharp later in the season because he did like six or seven shows last year, uh, and that's what qual qualified him for the Olympia. He placed um, I don't want to say the wrong numbers. He placed I think it was ten tenth. I know things. He placed 10th at the Olympia last year, men's open. So a top 10 Olympian coming into the show. Uh, technically, he should place higher than um, Andre Presti, but I just don't know if that type of bodybuilding math is going to play out very well in the show. Uh, Presti has the momentum from the New York Pro, and he also has better uh, separation and conditioning. So it's really going to be a toss-up. Uh, could Mohamed Shaban place all the way high as, you know, first, second, third? I definitely think so. Um, but really, I mean, the second through fifth in the show is going to really be a big toss up. Um, so also, speaking of toss ups, as we conclude the show, as we conclude my Cali Pro preview, guys, ladies and gentlemen, Max Charles has announced that he's doing the show. Um, and if there's anyone else, let me know early because I'm on the Pacific side. So, like, I can. I can make updates. If you guys know of any other athletes that are doing the men's open bodybuilding for the Cali pro, please let me know. But Max Charles has announced that he will be doing the show as well. Definitely going to be someone to stir up the top six. I've already made my predictions, but you know, if I can put seven people in the top six, I put Max Charles there. Uh, I don't think he's going to fall outside top three. He has the momentum historically. He's always in that top three. Uh, so I think Max is going to do well here. Uh, the big question, and I feel like the question with all of his shows is, you know, how much conditioning can he bring from the back? Uh, how much uh, mass can he put on the legs to, to allow it to catch up to the, to the upper body? Uh, from the front, his upper body's lights out. Probably some of the best we're going to see on the stage tomorrow. Uh, if we can get him next to Tony O'Burton, I think it's going to really highlight the um, the – spots that Max needs to improve on, and it's going to highlight Tonio's strengths. Tiny midsection, crazy bubbly muscle, young, fresh look. Uh, I think it's going to really uh, favor Tonio. So, you know, maybe fourth, fifth uh, is where Max is going to land, uh, but he's going to have to battle for it, guys, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that'll do it. That's my coverage of the preview for the Cali Pro, if you enjoy my style of contest coverage and athlete advocacy, I guess you could say, please consider subscribing. And of course, let me know your comments, thoughts, and potential concerns in the comment sections below. Check out my sponsors. Please do. Uh, they're great to me. They really treat me well, and they offer me some really cool products. Um, so far, I've paid for everything. I've bought everything. I haven't got any free stuff. Anywho. Anywho. 
Uh, check out my links, guys, if you want to support those companies. And subscribe if you have not. And uh, maybe you'll see yourself in the next Fan Friday. But uh, I'm Sanch. As always, thank you genuinely from the bottom of my heart so much for watching all the way to the end. 15 minutes. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning for the Cali Pro Prejudging.